of Lent 5, Tuesday, Jesus loved the sincerely wrong young man. The Lord said to me, Go again, love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel, who turn to other gods and love the raisin cakes of the pagans. Hosea 3 verse 1. Dearly beloved, in an action that is symbolic of his continued love for those who have turned away from him, and his steadfast desire that they repent of their sins and trust in him, the Lord tells Hosea the prophet to marry an adulteress. This marriage would be a living example placed before the people of the longing love of God, especially the Christ. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13 Keep this in mind as you listen to the continuing account of Jesus and the rich young man. Remember that this rich ruler has asked what he should do to inherit eternal life. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Mark 10, verses 19 through 21a. Love has such a wide variety of meanings and applications in English. There is brotherly love and the love of broccoli. There is puppy love and abusive love, the latter really not being love at all. There is infatuation and fondness as well as the love that a husband and wife have for each other. Consider the love that a parent has for a dying child, and one begins to approach the love that is used in the text for today, namely, then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. The Greek word that is translated as love is the highest form of love. It is the sacrificial love that beholds the need that another has and goes about to accomplish what is necessary for the beloved. From eternity, the Lord foresaw the need for a savior from sin, death, and hell. Mankind fell to the desires of the devil and committed spiritual adultery. We stood lost forever. God would not have it be so and would sacrifice himself and be the expiation, be the pouring out necessary to cover the sins of the world. Truly God beheld the cross and the empty tomb from before the foundation of the world, from eternity. Therefore, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 The young man believed in himself, not in Jesus as his Savior and Lord. Yet, Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Do not doubt, dear soul, that Jesus, looking at you, loves you. Even though you have sinned, he loves you, for he cannot deny himself. Are you repentant, and do you grieve your sin? No. Well, Jesus has a word for you to hear. It is the law, and it will be spoken in love. Are you sorry, and do you look to our Redeemer for his grace and mercy? Yes. Jesus has a word for you as well. It is also spoken in love. Forgiven. Prayer. O Lord Jesus, faithful bridegroom of the church and of my soul, you have loved me from eternity, called me in time, and promised to be with me always. Grant me faith to grieve and confess my sins, and to be forgiven in your name. Amen. Hymn number 142. Stanza 3. The Son of God is speaking here. Yea, Father, yea, most willingly, I'll bear what thou commandest. My will conforms to thy decree, I do what thou demandest. O wondrous love, what hast thou done? The Father offers up his Son, the Son content descendeth. O love, how strong thou art to save, thou beddest him within the grave, whose word the mountains rendeth. 